After another half hour or so of searching, we end up heading back to Carl's place. After the whole interview with Duke, she starts ranting a little about meth use and the physiological effects. Yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, I was only picking up on bits and pieces of what she was saying. Apparently, the drug stimulates the parts of the brain that create urges for tinkering. Which is why yards of meth houses often look like scrap yards after extended use. Poor Duke. Though the guy always kind of skewed me out, even... Though the guy kind of always skewed me out, even back when we were kids. They call it tweaking for a reason. I think he used to have a wife at some point, who I remember being really nice. I feel sad every time they mention her now. Because she's dead. Yeah, and Ryan I know how, I know how she died. probably did worse things first. No, he confirmed it. So. Yeah. She used to ride her bike around town all the time. And one day she stopped by to help me set up a root beer float stand. Aw. Then one day she just kind of disappeared. I think I was playing at Leo's house when the cops came to the door and asked if Leo's parents had seen her. Jenna uses her newly acquired spare house key and lets us in. I'd spent so much time at Carl's house growing up that stepping inside always kind of felt like coming home. Carl's parents were never as friendly as Leo's or TJ's, but they were often just straight up absent, which means we got the run of the place. I glance off to the side and notice a divot in the wood paneling next to the door. Carl slammed his head there when we were rough housing six or seven years ago. And there's just still a slot in it. Like, there's just memorable Carl head impacts throughout the house. I'm realizing something. What's that? We keep talking about everybody else's family and homes, and we don't even have a moment of considering Chase's. I mean, Chase vaguely mentions his parents occasionally, but yeah, he, he also mean, just like, mentions that his parents were nice enough. No, I, I mean, like in modern, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think if they ever mentioned parent his him parents moving away, because I'm saying, I'm saying that oh. on this trip we never think about the idea of his parents existing, like as a presence that we could go to or a house we could visit. Yeah, and it seems like we're on good terms with our parents. So if yeah. they lived here. I feel like we would mention we would because they visit lived them? here before we left a few yeah. years ago, but we make no effort to visit Chase's parents, and I don't remember if they mentioned him moving them moving out or not. But we also, even if they moved out, we never think about like going by his house, like and looking at it or anything. That, that makes me think that they probably moved away, but I obviously can't confirm this. I just feel like it'd be out of character for him to not stop by his parents' house, because Chase seems like a yeah. fairly nice kid. And he seems like he likes his parents well enough. Like, his parents are nice from his It's one of those things that makes me wonder if the specific omission of it is a thing that is being omitted on purpose so that it can pay off at some point. Or if, if, it's, if that's a thing that's going to come up at some point. I feel like it might just, it could also just be out of convenience. Because if you're trying to tell like a story, you might not want to have to spend like 20 <clears throat> minutes going to visit like, your parents' eh, protagonist. house. protagonist. Don't think about his family. Well, because, you know, we arrive here in the car with our friends, and it's like, what are you going to do to, like, mention that you're taking time out to go visit your parents, and then just have there be an omission in the timeline of the story just to include that detail? Uh, I mean, I, I imagine there would be something worth discussing and showing, and not just this thing you skip. Like, and then he visited his parents, the way that people are like, and then they used, visited the restroom. And then you just skip <laughs> over it. <laughs> yeah, I think they would just omit it in the same way, where it's just like, oh, like, eh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious it's gonna, it's gonna about take time and how it doesn't seem to come up, and I'm trying to remember if it's been mentioned if they moved or not. I don't feel like it <clears throat> has, but I also can't say for sure. It's a wonder we didn't do more damage. Honestly, having a, 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 a ch like a young, rowdy, <laughs> horned head child would yeah. be like a big uh, liability <laughs> anywhere like, you took them. No yeah. antique stores for you. Well, he he had to get. I think he had to get older for the horns to grow in, though. Yeah, but they still, I mean, I guess so. But they still have that, like, he's be like a teenager and still have, the, like, enough to, yeah, like, cause physical damage. Yeah, but not a, but not a little shit. Yeah. The way that kids are just tantrum machines and just energy nightmares. And so, like, putting horns on that, you're like, please stop. You see those cute little, those cute little baby goats and rams just, like, bucking their heads against each other, you know? <laughs> I wonder if just some, some furry babies would just be, like, the worst thing to deal with. As a, like, oh, like yeah. a baby monkey would be like, oh, no. <laughs> like, they're all, like, all over the place. Jenna nudges me with her shoulder, and I shift my attention back to her. Hey, I'm going to put something on in the living room. I've been mainly camped up here on the couch with my laptop while you guys were out earlier, trying to get some studying done. 
Despite the quiet, it's a little difficult to focus with all this going on. So, you want to watch the you want to watch some TV? Well, sure. I've got something in mind. Puts on some hardcore porn. <laughs> she smiles at me, turning a tail to head down the, the hall. You had a Netflix and chill? I follow suit, briefly considering raiding the cupboards for snacks, but it kind of feels out of line considering the circumstances. I don't think they'd miss it. Flynn had turned the air conditioning off last night, so we've got the ceiling fan going overhead. It's doing a pretty good job of keeping me cool. The blades spinning so fast they almost look still. When I was a kid, I was always afraid of having my fan on the high setting. The thing would start to wobble and click, and I thought at any moment it would spin off its socket and come careening right towards me. I feel like every person has had that thought before. Oh, yeah. Just think continually about the fact that, like, ceiling fans are just there above you for so long, all the time, just thousands and thousands of hours over the course of years, and you're like, is it ever going to fucking fall? Like, what's... We also live in a place that has earthquakes pretty consistently. Yeah, I know we, but I never, I never feel them. Well, like, yeah, I got but a phone I mean, notification like yesterday about one, and I'm like, oh, yeah, there was. I didn't even know. But I mean, what if that's the one thing that sets that ceiling fan off? It's like the last straw. <laughs> as if, a, as if the slight wobble of the of that we don't even notice is somehow more forceful than like the actual shaking the fan does to itself. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> This one Carl has looks extremely sturdy, though. It kind of looks like it's made out of some sort of brushed copper, like a turquoise painted metal base. Sounds fancy. As at this point, I realize I'm not doing a good job of focusing on the anime Jenna put on. The ceiling fan's way more interesting. I glance over to her to see if she's noticed my wandering gaze, but I see that her eyes are closed. At first, I think she's asleep. Though they begin to flutter open after some time. She rolls her head some in my direction, ca catching my gawking. Hmm? She smiles lightly, stretching her arms out over her head and letting out a, a long yawn. What? I put on my best innocent face. Just checking to see if we if you were as riveted by the ongoing developments of Mr. Wong's fledgling dim sum business. <laughs> as a, an amused noise escapes her lips, her left ear twitching some as she shares, uh, stares at the screen with half-lidded eyes. This is some rock and music for a dim sum business anime. Yeah. It's like do 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 do. I wonder if it's a reference to anything. Oh, have the magical demon girl shown up yet? <laughs> In the, the dim magical, sum business? Show? The magical demon what? I thought this was a nice little, what do they call it? A, a slice of life thing. I love slice of life. Well, I suppose it's how they get you. She hums her words, her tone sleepy and warm. What is this, Moondi? They lull you into something calm, low pressure, giving you a chance to really live the setting before they pull the rug out from beneath this you. This is Moondi. <laughs> Jenna's tone is infectious, and even I start to speak with a sort of rumbling, only half-serious whine. It's, it's Minoka Magica. Ugh, do they all have to be like that? I mean, what if I just want a quiet, slow-burn kind of show? It seems like all of them these days have to have fantastical bullshit that comes out of nowhere. On screen, the character of Mr. Wong, a rotund red panda is cooking a batch of fried rice in a large wok. It's all so lovingly animated for something so mundane. Food and anime. Oh yeah. The fucking Doro Hidoro extended intro that's just just making gyoza. Dude, it's so good looking <laughs> too. And I, I don't even eat gyoza because I so usually good. can't. But like, boy, Does, those they gyoza make look vegetable good. Gyoza? I know, but it's very rare that I see it anywhere. You can practically see each individual piece of egg, pepper, and seasoning he sprinkles on top. Chase, there are plenty of slow burn shows out there. And how'd you even know? You told me you don't keep up with this stuff anymore. I mean, I occasionally will put on some anime when I'm bored back in Pueblo. Oh yeah? Eh, well, I guess hanging out with you has made me kind of interested again. Get into anime for you. <laughs> I 
wish someone would get into anime for me. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna smiles again, and I can see the little tips of her tiny fangs. She shifts in her seat, scooting from her, from her side of the sofa to mine. Her arms wrap around my torso, squeezing me some. Without really thinking, I rest my head against hers, and exhale for what seems like ages. I can feel butterflies in my stomach somewhere deep down, a light prickle of goosebumps along, along my neck. It's so intimate, so beyond the boundaries of closeness that Jenna and I had shared in the past. But it's comfortable, no judgment or pressure. Just two people on the same wavelength, both very tired, stressed out, and kinda slap happy. I watch her chest rise and fall against mine, her fur so much softer than mine. It's like running your paws through goose down. I feel like that might be a weird thing to say, considering that are, are geese anthropomorphic in this world? Talking I don't about know. touching geese? I've never seen a bird person yet. I've only seen mammals okay. and reptiles. And we saw a bird in a tree earlier, so maybe yeah. birds are excluded from this. But there's a bat, which I guess is a mammal, but still is a flying animal, so I, you yeah, it's, know. It's definitely a mammal, but also one that can't fly any. Those are... The level of vestigialness is just strange to me. Like, we talked about this before, but it's just the fact that they have wings, but not usable wings is like, what do you... This seems like a pain to live with Well, forever. it also just seems kind of depressing. It makes me kind of sad. It's like, oh, you poor thing. Like, they even know what they're for. Imagine <laughs> having wings and knowing that you used to be able to fly and not being able to use them. And still, <laughs> and still seeing current birds that apparently exist flying everywhere. Yeah. And you're just wishing you could also fly. Why could I be a Bojack bat? Yeah, why, why could I be in the Bojack Horseman universe? <laughs> I slide my fingers around her shoulder and down her arm, then back up again. That's... So... Beastars does that. In the Beastars universe, they just look like regular-ass people with bird heads. Yeah, there's the eagle and guy. And then they can just fucking fly. It, but it looks fucking goofy. It's like, uh, like, yeah, it's really goofy, because it look, it, it's like in a, in a relatively serious manga... It's not that serious, but it looks the art style is relatively serious looking most of the time. Well, the eagle looks the intense too. The fucking birds could just suddenly fly in like like they're fucking BoJack characters. They make like a, like a T pose. Visual. They make like a T pose in the air, <laughs> like they're just yeah. flying in the air with a T pose. Like one of the first ever stories was a Beast Complex story about these two little kids, and in that one, there is like a, there's a scene where a bird has multiple people on their back and they're chasing someone, and it's like what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Excuse me? That can't even happen with current birds. You can't yeah. do that. I slide my fingers around her shoulder and down her arm, then back up again. Is this just platonic? Like, one of those cuddly girl slumber uh, party kind of thing. No! No! <laughs> we never did oh. anything like this when we were younger, though. It's so confusing going to girl slumber parties. I don't know what to think about it. I'm like, is this normal? Like, this is not how I think of this. It's always been very confusing. I look back at my childhood. I'm like, and I still don't know. I'm like, was so-and-so making a move on me? I couldn't tell because I don't, I think of it that way, but maybe they don't think of it that way. accepted tone of girl slumber parties a, an extended like con run by like the small percentage of them that just are gay? And like, I don't, got I, them. maybe. We tricked them all to thinking this is normal. We win. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. So it's like, it's okay. I can change in front of you because we're both girls. And I'm like, I guess, but like, I'm going to turn around anyway because, you know. <laughs> I'm being respectful. <laughs> classy Stephanie. Very classy. The closest thing I can think of is when we shared an air mattress when we went camping for my 16th birthday. Leo having been out of town at the time, of course. You're very cute, Chase. Her words take me by surprise. The compliment's so blatant and not something I'd been told in years. Fuck it up, Leo. <laughs> yeah. It feels like a minute. It feels like a minute passes before I feel her weight <laughs> shift beside me. She looks up at me, and I look back down at her. Next thing I know, her mouth is pressed against mine. My heart skips in my chest, and there's definitely some tightness in my shorts. Her muzzle is small, and my tongue easily f uh, fills its inside once she opens her lips. She continues for some time, the noise from the TV seeming to fade into the background. 
It, an unimportant mumbling, drowned out by our pounding heartbeats and the whir of the spinning fan above. It isn't until the episode ends and we're left in actual silence that Jenna seems to pause. She pulls back, eyes on my chest and her expression indiscernible in the new darkness. Hmm. <laughs> I am a little concerned about moving forward with this. I've seen how these sorts of things can destroy friendships. And the one I have with you, I truly value. And where we'll look at ourselves in the morning, well, in a couple hours, and be disappointed with ourselves. Wait. I stop for a second, frowning. Are... Are you saying you don't want to? You know, at least in part, because you think I'm going to be bad at it? No! <laughs> you, you stupid boy. <laughs> stupid boy. Disappointed in ourselves? <laughs> Jenna doesn't immediately respond. Oh no. I've, I've done it plenty of times. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm experienced. That's not the fucking point, you idiot. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> you stupid. Oh my god. It's like he ignored the, it's like he ignored the whole first sentence, like, about them being friends. Like. <laughs> My voice comes out a little louder than expected, and Jenna pushes her paw to my mouth, hushing me. I pull her away, repeating myself, but this time more quietly. I'm not... I, I'm not I'm not bad at sex. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can feel my cheeks burning at this point. Jenna's increasingly amused expression not helping at all. Chase, oh my god. Jenna's shoulders shake as she titters clearly tickled by how flustered I'm getting. I I'm serious. I'm seriously good at fucking. <laughs> 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 I can see that. That's not exactly what I was getting at, but I'm well aware that you and Leo snuck off every chance you could when we were, were younger. But as you may possibly know, there are several slight differences in anatomy between Leo and I. I continue to frown at her as hard as I can. <laughs> okay. Don't give me that look. Now I actually feel bad. I grunt quietly. Well, how many guys have you been with? Not... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean... You got to ask me earlier at, at the diner, so it's only fair, right? I mean... We kind we, I'm Chase kind of answered. I feel like he kind of danced around it, but whatever. After the first year of college, I pretty much lost complete contact with Jenna's social circle. Initially, it was because Carl never really wanted to go out, but we mainly just hung uh, hung about in our dorm. But by the time Carl dropped out, it was like all our social links had been severed. I'd look at the pictures she'd post in her timeline, and I wouldn't recognize anybody she was friends with. It was such a contrast, seeing her at all these fancy events, wearing formal dresses and receiving awards. For a while, I thought she'd just changed transformed by college life and the intellectual peers she surrounded herself with. But talking to her again this week, I've come to realize that's not the case at all. She was always that person. It was just everyone else that brought her down to our level, I guess. Been with? She leans back some, perking an eyebrow and putting on a professional visage. Like, she's still got a mirth-laden look in her eyes. Are you asking about dating or sex? Um... Both, I guess? Well, those aren't, like, the fucking same, but okay. Oh, well, about the same then. Six or seven. Six and a half? Let's just say six. What happened with number seven? She lets out an amused noise, then seems to think for a moment as she, as she strokes her chin. I think you're number seven, Chase. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, it was only too serious. Just nope. this guy who worked at the gym I went to. I believe he was a draft horse. Oh, oh fuck. Which means he was an alcoholic. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I was gonna make a, I was gonna make a fox in the stable joke again. Cause she is always, a fox. Always with your mind in the gut. Oh yeah. My mouth goes a little dry. A, a draft horse. Mm hmm. She smiles lightly. <laughs> He was really sweet, and the muscles were nice. Usually I don't like being picked up, 
but it was definitely interesting with him being nearly seven feet tall. I stare blankly at her, eyes wide. She continues to smile at me, though the corner of her mouth twitches, and she brings her paw up to, the, to cover her muzzle. Chase, I'm messing with you. Jenna! I scowl. Wait, is that really your type? I thought you would be more into, like, twiggy anime boys. <laughs> like little otter boys. Like Stephanie. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know my manga and anime interests do not control my love life. I like people primarily based on their personality. Yeah, personality. Oh, I'm fucked then? <laughs> Jenna chuckles at that. She reaches out and takes my paw, giving it a firm squeeze before patting my cheek. Though it feels nice, I'm still not sure how to take all this. I'm sorry for messing with you. Her voice is clear and soft, and she punctuates the end of her sentence with a kiss on the tip of my nose. I'm admittedly a little nervous myself. Crossing new thresholds like this can be a little nerve-wracking. But make no mistake, I do want this. I let that settle for a moment before reaching up, taking hold of each of her wrists. Wait, are you serious? She nods happily. If you're okay with it, of course. Really? You and me? She nods again. Mm-hmm. Like... Boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. The thought... The thought... One of these is, needs to be having an asset in The thought enters my head just before I speak it, and I have just enough time to close my mouth before it's uttered. She looks at me curiously. Just shut up and say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm down with this. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm down yeah. with this. Whatever. Just play it off. Like, eh. <laughs> it's cool with me, I guess. Um... What's up, game? That sex was scary. What? Why'd that bring us to nightmares? <laughs> I guess that's our night terror moment. I guess the, I guess the straight sex get, happens off camera in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it is like a, admittedly more descriptive in terms of lead up, for sure. It's they, like they skipped over. It's surprising because they they don't actually do that. Yeah, I wanted to hear about the fucking. I want to hear about the fucking. I mean, him jerking off the shower was cut off though too. Yeah. I wanted I, I, further explanation. From what please. I've heard, there's like some subset of the audience that does not respond well to the Jenna route existing and doesn't want to play it. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Deal with it. I'm like, you get to preemptively. You even get to preemptively opt out of being by, probably. I don't think that's not how sp bi bisexuality works. But you get to opt, you get to opt, out, opt, opt out of telling her you're bi. Don't exclude my people. <laughs> I actually want to go back. Go back to what? Eh. Controller work. Fuck it, I'll use my mouse. Eh. Uh. And then load. Remember what, 100 years ago? This is like a whole long time ago. Yes, I'm gay. Yeah. See, he's got nothing to worry about. I'm not in the mood to go into depth about my sexuality. Oh, that makes me think that you are just bi. Yes, saying, anything, any, saying anything else just confuses me. I know, people. right? I sigh and rub my eyes with a paw, still a little tired. Hey, don't tell Leo I work at the state fair every year. Huh? <laughs> Wasn't planning on it. I still want- I want to know the strat. I want to know what the strat is. The strat? Yes. Oh, for how to win it. <laughs> yes, Jenna. Let's uh, go back to where I was. Did I even save? You did. Yes. It's- okay. yeah. I you I you did. I accidentally so I accidentally saved it in the choices uh, page. It doesn't matter. 
So that, that that's that clarified. So Chase is by regardless. He just doesn't want. You just choose whether or not to say it to Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you guys have been having fun. Where the fuck have you been, Flynn? I glance down at Jenna, her legs still entwined in my own. <laughs> I quickly try to untangle us, scooting to the other side of the couch while yanking up my shorts. She's got a firm grip on my tail for some reason, and I have to grit my teeth to keep from yelping as it tugs. Groggily, I begin to see her turquoise eyes flutter open, blinking at her surroundings, then me, then the sound coming from the entrance hall. Ugh. She rubs her face, trying to shake off the sleep fatigue. What'd you say? There's some clattering noises from the kitchen coming from the... From the kitchen coming from the kitchen. <laughs> like the <laughs> rustling of plastic bags and the clacking of Tupperware. Did he not see us? Thank fuck he's a lizard and can't smell at le us at least. Yeah, but he's got a heat... He's got a heat signature. Like, what does that mean? Well, they're not hotter right now. <laughs> I'm really, but he can see their bodies next to each other. Yeah, I'm saying like he's not gonna smell the the, the fucking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The room he walked in on. Be awkward if Carl got back. <laughs> I asked if you fuckers have been having fun. It's midday. Flynn, you got our texts. We were up late last night searching for Carl. Yeah, and making yourself at home here. What? What you got what you got on over here, hentai? I checked the TV. Flynn, I'm sure you're super into hentai. It's so shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's frozen on an old Biawi. Well it's still I mean hentai is just like porn. Is it? Is yeah. not implied to be straight? No. Hentai is just all the porn. It's frozen on a guide menu screen. Guide menu screen grab of a frantic anime girl holding way more bowls of soup than is ordinary considered reasonable. Mm. Jenny yawns into her paw, quietly pulling up a black pair of panties around her thighs, followed by her trademark jean shorts, the only one she's ever owned. <laughs> she's so lackadaisy about it, like she doesn't care if she's caught. Her expression is distracted, but not by Flynn or me. Though she does manage a quick smile in my direction when she does focus her gaze my way. I return the smile, albeit lopsidedly. Half my face still feels tingly and asleep. So we're dead fucking certain that Duke doesn't know what sh doesn't know shit then. God damn it. I hear the heavy footfalls of the Gila leave the kitchen, making his way around to us. He's holding four small plastic containers. He gives two to each of us, setting them down on the coffee table. The insides are fogged up from condensation, or steam. I can't exactly tell what they contain. It looks... green, I guess? Flynn sees me gawking and lets out an exasperated puff of air through his flared nostrils. The top container's got Caesar salad, the bottom's got fresh cooked bluegill. Bluegill? I blink at the steamy container. You catch that yourself? Yeah. Oh he wow. Perks a brow ridge. Look at you, Flynn. And you cooked it? Just for us? The line of question seems to give the Gila pause, as if he needs to make sure he phrases his next words carefully. Jenna, spur Jenna smirks in my direction before blowing her nose into a tissue. Usually I drop some off for Carl. Oh, <laughs> he loves Carl. I take care. He takes care of him all the time. He even, folds his arms over his chest. Even though Carl's rich as fuck and can probably buy whatever he wants yeah. with his parents' money, Flynn cooks him fresh bluegill and gives him the only good birthday present. Yeah. You know, you know, to make sure he doesn't go into a full-on diabetic coma, his arteries packed up with pizza and energy drinks. Oh, I see. Yeah, makes sense. That's very thoughtful of you, Flynn. Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> you, could, you could supplement all that pizza and energy drinks with, uh, mercury. <laughs> I give him a thumbs up, to which he shakes his head. I think mercury is more of a ocean fish thing, but it I could be wrong. I don't know. 
I know bluegills are river fish because I catch them in Animal Crossing. And also there's a river here. Yes. And not an ocean. <laughs> yes. And he definitely isn't going to the lake. Whatever. Any word from the sheriff's office? Jenna reaches into her shorts and grabs her phone. She taps at it for a few moments before shaking her head. Nothing since yesterday. The person I spoke with at the office said they reached out to me with any questions or updates they had. God. Fucking useless. They're so goddamn overstaffed there anyway. How hard can it be to find one fat-ass rich kid in the middle of vast fucking nowhere? Apparently rather difficult. Just waiting for Carl's parents to post for reward money or some shit. Oop. Ah, joystick. I thought it was like another, like... No, surprise choice. Yeah, I was like, what Doki choice? Doki. I was say, what choice could we have here? I don't think public entities get to claim those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flynn scowls at Jenna for a good four seconds before turning away, walking to the grand living room window and peering out at the backyard. Well, yeah, I fucking know that. Just, just don't make a lick of sense. No food, cars, or cell phones missing. Nothing valuable stolen and no break-in indications. Besides the scuff marks you made on the way in. Flynn, if I hadn't gone in through the window, Lee would have eventually shoulder rammed the front door down. Flynn folds his hands behind the back of his head, clenching his eyes shut. Yeah. God, what a fucking crazy ass. You're right. At least his desperate party attempt helped us figure out Carl was missing earlier. That is beneficial. Jenna pushes herself to her feet. Walking over besides Flynn, she folds her arms over her chest. So, we briefly skimmed over this yesterday, but with regards to Carl's mental state leading up to all this... Flynn's ever, Flynn ever so slightly shifts his head in the Fennec's direction, their size difference stark as they stand silhouetted in front of the window. It's like, like three feet or something. Is there anything you could think of that would help us out here? Anything to cause Carl to say fuck it and run out into the desert without any belongings, you mean? Yes. Jenna answers flatly. He's been depressed as hell, but how? But that's how he's been since he dropped out of college. All that digital art shit he used to do hasn't done much of that either lately. Whenever I check my, my phone or computer, he's always online, just sending me memes and shit all day. <laughs> Despite my efforts, there ain't been much in the line of indication he'd been planning on changing that routine anytime soon. I'm sorry to hear that. She sounds genuine in that regard, letting out a quiet sigh. Ain't nothing you can do about it from fancy college land. I finally get my ass off the couch, silently hoping that I hadn't left the surface all oily. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> such a constant problem for no. you. I think he's been getting out. I think he's been getting high more. Says it chills him out. Helps with the nightmares and shit. Nightmares? Flynn nods. Yeah, he's been going off on how his house is haunted. Says things get weird whenever he goes to bed. Weird how? Flynn is starting to look increasingly exasperated at my continued prodding. It's evident he wants to shift focus back to the search effort. Fuck, Chase, I don't know. Bumps in the night, creepy children whispers, distant laughing, that sort of thing. Said he only heard them when he was about to fall asleep or was waking up, so he could never investigate. Interesting. Really? You said that getting high was how he coped with the, this newfound paranoia? Mm-hmm. I let, I let him sleep over once, and my whole room smelled like skunkweed for a fucking week. He slept over because he was afraid to be here, in this house? No, he stayed. He stayed over because I was plowing his ass. Ah! His tone is laden with sarcasm. Oh, no! And I even find myself snickering a bit at the shock. I was hoping it was genuine. <laughs> Jenna doesn't laugh, though, meeting Flynn's gaze with an indiscernible expression. The Gila clears his throat, scratching at his stomach. Yeah. Yeah, he was afraid to be here. 
I know enough about Carl's family to know that his house is seriously old. His great great something or other is the town founder after all. The place has since been seriously modernized into a more stucco adobe style, but there's some definite history underneath all this. Growing up, Carl started thinking there were ghosts in the house. It freaked him out pretty badly. So much so, his parents basically begged me to have sleepovers with them during the weekends, and even some weekdays. Not that I minded, of course. Carl had all the video game consoles that were out, and his parents bought him M-rated games. Ooh, ooh, ooh he's, perfect dark. He, he's <laughs> <laughs> so he's that friend. I just have to contextualize what era of video games we're talking about. Like, oh my god, an M-rated video game on the Nintendo sixty four or GameCube? Scandalous. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> there's really not much they could do back then in terms like, of like. <laughs> no, like at this point, the most vicious game that might have come out was Manhunt One. Like, the 360's not out yet when they were kids. Like, they, they were, they're talking about the, the GameCube at the latest, I think. I, I had a friend in elementary school. I had to think about what, what year that would be then for me. When when did the... Okay, okay. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Vice City? That's the PS2, so probably yeah. 2001 is probably when the console came out. Okay. But, but that was the second con uh, GTA on that console. So well, what, what, was the, what was the first one? GTA 3. What, what was it called? 3. <laughs> okay, okay. The Grand Theft Auto 1, 2, 3, Vice City, San Andreas, 4, 5. Yeah, I, I had a friend who had GTA in grade school. So I was probably in 4th grade then third yeah, or fourth I guess those grade. were rated games yeah I remember they were being so like cartoonish well she, she it's her, hard to remember her parents let her do whatever the fuck she yeah. wanted they they no joke had a four story house which is hard to imagine where <laughs> I came from and we used to jump off the stair rail, rail and put pillows on like the like at the bottom of the stairs and we jumped down with umbrellas mm. and pretend like we were Mary Poppins and like land on pillows. It's like such a bad idea. Yeah, no, honestly, it was. We should not have been doing it. The fuck. And then I got to watch um, it. A horrible idea. <laughs> I watched it. We watched Eight Mile when it came uh, out. We used to watch Eight Mile all the time, over and over again. I saw Starship, Starship Troopers in theaters. What's funny is that everyone was mad that we saw it, and I think they were most mad about the like like my dad would always talk about people like giving it like the way they looked at him and the th going in and out of the theater and stuff, and it's like. I think they were probably mad at the co-ed shower scene, but I literally didn't remember it. That was not even a it, blip on my radar that there was a co-ed shower scene. Dude, I was like, out. I'd go with my grandpa to go see all the Saw movies, like... Pff, come on, no big deal. Shockingly, I was unfazed by topless women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really now? <laughs> M-rated games, but it's, it's, I, I'm like 90% sure Perfect Dark is M-rated, and that's baffling, because it's just a spy game. Like, I'm like, what the fuck was the rule back then? Just, they were so not used to guns, that anything with guns was, was it all M-rated by default? Maybe. I gotta stay up late with this giant TV, blowing up aliens and running over hookers. Okay, yeah. so that was GTA. Yeah! Yeah! I remember he started to become less afraid as time went on, and his parents stopped asking for me to come over as much. See, my my, my friends, the the my that person I was talking about. <laughs> so of course, shitbag younger me told Carl a bunch of stories about a ghost bride whom I saw standing outside his house at midnight. Oh, what a punk ass bitch! Because <laughs> you want to play more video games. <laughs> kids, <laughs> kids are so bad. Hey man, respectable right. and very clever. What were you saying? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> No, I was just saying that, that that same friend, her parents would ask me to come over, but it wasn't because she was afraid. It was because her, their daughter was like a brat and was mean, and I was like her only friend. And just a little they, shit. They really liked me a lot, and they're hoping I'd be a good influence on her. <laughs> so they buy me presents and stuff. I'd come over and they buy me gifts for for showing up. Like, please come fix our parenting. Well, and then her the daughter would like throw fits and like throw tantrums, and the mom would be like, "I'm so sorry for this," and I'm like. It's whatever. I'm pretty patient. I'm like, it's cool, you know? But they were like, thank you so much for being her friend. And I'm like, no, no, no problem. And you're secretly conditioning her to be worse so you get more presents. No, like def no, def I, I, I could not have made that girl worse. Just saying. <laughs> oh, scathing. 
Like you better when you're on the back of a milk carton. <laughs> And that's how I got to spend my whole fifth grade summer vacation living at Carl's place. The fact that Carl is still freaked out about this sort of thing is pretty concerning. Well, to be quite fair, if I held the mindset that my house was haunted and saw whatever that was on the phone out my window... She pauses, shaking her head. I'd probably be rather freaked out as well. Yeah, but would you run outside? That doesn't make any sense. You'd think this place would be more ransacked if it was like a fucking kidnapping or something. You don't try and kidnap a fucking ram without getting some serious dents and scratches in the drywall. The idea of Carl being assaulted like this is starting to give me a serious pit in the bottom of my stomach. Well, you did find some scattered plaster dust and marks on the wall near the basement crawl space. Yeah, maybe there could have been like a initial scuffle down there and then he was held at like gunpoint or something Oh. oh no he doesn't like that <laughs> the music cut out too oh no it didn't <laughs> that was just a lull <laughs> there's a look of sudden shock and the direness of my words that flashes across Flynn's face anxiety fear, concern all expressions seldom seen on the lizard he quickly stifles them, adopting his usual disgruntled demeanor, emitting forth a familiar grunt in response. Guys, I think we're escalating here. No offense to you, Chase, but I think I might want to have a chat with Jeremy myself. You can come along, of course. Same to you, Flynn. Despite Jenna's assurance of non-offense, I can't help but feel a little shitty about not pressing harder for information while I was there. Yeah, let me do it. I'll do it better. I mean, fuck, I want to be a journalist, right? Yeah, that's her brother, so... I can't be- I can't be getting intimidated by childhood bullies. Yeah, but they're your childhood bullies. Flynn nods, but only slightly. Yeah, but Chase said he- he so Chase said he told him the drugs he sold weren't laced. Lace drugs wouldn't result in that image on the phone. Shit, I haven't talked to that flunk ass in so fucking long. What the fuck's flunk? I've never heard flunk ass before. He's, a, he's an innovator. Like you flunked out of school like you're a flunk ass? <laughs> you're always a bit too old to get the brunt of his sadistic side when we were growing up. Thought that was mainly Clint. They all rubbed off each, they all rubbed off on each other easily enough. Clint pulls out his phone. A rather dated, first-gen looking thing from the late 2000s. Oh, that's kind of endearing, too. He pecks at it with his large fingers, walking off towards the foyer. Gonna text TJ and Pinball Smasher that we're together and asking around. No need to be more specific than that. Trust me, wasn't about to tell him where we're headed till we're done. Poor TJ. Oh, I fucking forgot about TJ, he's just been with Leo this whole time! <laughs> Assuming, assuming Leo didn't just leave. I can't see them just getting along by themselves. I don't think Leo bo is bothering with TJ. I think he's just gone. Poor TJ. I'll make sure to text him to make sure he's alright. Which means TJ is prone to having one of the episodes he had in Leo's campaign. Where yeah, where he's, he's just, just running down the street. Yeah. We're getting later in the week, isn't it Thursday? Yeah. Well, now we get, well... It said Thursday, and then we had sex with Jenna, and then woke up. Which is, yeah, it's, it's still Thursday. Okay. That, was, that was 3 Oh, okay, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. We stand, uh, we start to head out as well, when he suddenly calls out, calls out back to us. Oh, bring your goddamn lunch. It took me for fucking ever to put that together. <gasps> oh. Everyone just was moving on. There's just food right in front of them Dude, that was made. Flint's a Flint for people. That's Soon how you know he's better than, than Leo. <laughs> yeah, because he actually knows how to dinners. cook. The, the food's a metaphor for gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> no! Oh, bad joke. No! What, what, what's your bad joke, Keith? Well, Flynn came to chase... And Jenna with salad and fish. Like to like toss <laughs> salad in in vagina joke? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like 
Oh, like, I can correlate both of these with sex jokes. Well, I, I feel like that. You know, <laughs> I think that's that. That's a big brain joke. I just made a dumb joke, and then it was like, wait, can I? I can connect this more. I can make this better. <laughs> A nightmare. That's like I'm gonna think of every little little thing that just happened. Boop, 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 boop. You, no one wants to live in my brain. <laughs> Are you nervous? I ask, trying to break the silence. Flynn takes his eyes off the road long enough to peer back at me through the rearview mirror, then glances over at Jenna. She's riding a shotgun, cradling her fishy Tupperware <laughs> in her lap so it doesn't spill. <laughs> that changes everything for me now. <laughs> I already told you I wouldn't mind seeing Jeremy again. Yeah, see that I told you that was the one that she wouldn't mind seeing again. Okay. Jeremy. It's mystery solved. Everyone can stop yelling. Or yell more. I don't know. Engagement. Leave a comment right now for no reason. Yeah, just put no reason yeah. in the comments. No, no, no. It's your favorite kind of, of fish dish. I don't say pussy. <laughs> or do. Or do. Yeah, care. honestly, I, it's fine. <laughs> Moderator, delete all the ones that say pussy. <laughs> But please tell there's, me how many say pussy. There's five layers to this joke. Give now, me a tally. That actually is funny. <laughs> well, what about you, Flynn? Why are you asking me? They weren't my bullies. I'm not sure if that's exactly true. I have distinct memories of the Tetanus Alley crew calling him all sorts of slurs back in the day. Hell, they started a rumor that he was some kind of sadomasochistic gay rapist. Wait, wait, sorry, who? Flynn. The Tetanus Alley people spread that rumor about him. Because he was openly hmm. gay. I mean, sadomasochistic. I can see it. But... <laughs> but that's not a judgment. <laughs> that's just fun. Yeah. Consensual yeah. sadomasochistic. BDSM Flynn. Yeah. Said, uh, said rumor somehow wormed his its way out of Echo to our high school. I remember there was this whole thing where he got called into the counselor's office about it. Oh, that's sad. He proceeded to call the counselor a wretched, gashed cunt and got a <laughs> one-week suspension. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Wow. His vocabulary started early. It wasn't even clear if any of that... Sh if it wasn't even... Cl it wasn't ever clear if any of that shit stuck. He certainly never cried about it like TJ did. Sounds more like you're the one with the issues. I frown. I'm gonna spill bluegill all over your seats. You'll be scrubbing the upholstery with my foot up your ass if you even open the goddamn lid in my truck. Chase already spoke with them. You said you only saw Jeremy, Heather, and Micah, correct? Jenna looks back at me and I nod. Micah! Heard he was back in town a while ago. Never expected he'd turn up again after, what, seven years? Have you come by to say hello? There's a hint of teasing in her voice, responding to the Gila's latent disdain for the kid that's evident in his tone. He stole my fucking dirt bike. Those are expensive. He stole your fucking dirt bike eight years ago. I would I would not. Yeah. Eight. I don't... Give it back. <laughs> or give me money. Yeah. Well, he was still kind of a shithead when I visited yesterday. Yeah. I see the back of Flynn's scaly head can't curiously. Those can't again. Yeah, you can just really tell what words certain writers lean on more. What'd he do? Well, he didn't do anything to me, I guess. He just, you know, called me a faggot. <laughs> But that's just normal that, echo. Yeah, oh yeah. It just seemed like he hated my guts. I tried calling him out on his shit, but he wasn't having any of it. He call you a faggot? <laughs> he knows. Of course. <laughs> he smirks into the rear view mirror at me. Glad to see this is all so amusing to you. I'm allowed to think whatever the fuck I want is amusing. Are you gonna ask for your dirt bite back? I ask, half joking, half trying to break the tension. I did get it back, remember? Little shit dented the fuck out of it and put his weird punk band stickers all over the body, but I got it. Literally had to go to his house and talk with his parents to get it back. Should have pressed charges. <laughs> good, good on him. Which house was that again? It was the yellow stucco one at the end of Jasmine. 
one of the older buildings they constructed during World War II. His and mine were the only houses down there that weren't RVs or mobile homes. I believe it was condemned and demolished a couple years ago. Right, Flynn? Flynn nods, turning off onto a dirt road. Oh, yeah. The roof was caving in. The electric roll was a fucking hazard, and the pipes were lead-based. Lead-based? I thought that was banned before then. Major cities did. Technically, it wasn't the building in the building code until the 80s. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Micah grew up with lead poisoning. A lot, oh, of, a lot of these kids did. Yep. Yeah. Jenna frowns to herself. Let's just focus on the missing ram, all right? We drive in silence for a while until we see some smoke rising up from behind one of the older trailers. The hell's going on? That sounds like a mystery for next time. Bum, bum, bum.